Hi, my name is Amber Terhune. I'm the health educator for the Johnson County Health Department. This presentation is about hepatitis C. Hepatitis C is an infectious inflammatory viral disease. It may be acute, in which it is short-term and occurs within six months of exposure, or chronic, in which it is long-term and occurs when the virus remains. Chronic hepatitis C may progress over years, and you may not know that you're infected until later when you have liver damage. Chronic hepatitis C occurs in up to 85% of all hepatitis C cases. Hepatitis C is the most common blood-borne disease in the United States, and it is the leading cause of liver transplant. It is estimated that there are more than 3 million people infected, but about half may not know. It is estimated that there were over 41,000 new cases in 2016 in the United States. Genotype 1 is the most common, followed by genotypes 2 and 3. Hepatitis C is spread through direct contact with human blood or body fluids containing contaminated blood. The virus can survive in dried blood for several days. Hepatitis C is not spread by sharing eating and drinking utensils, coughing or sneezing, hugging or kissing, casual contact, or breastfeeding. However, if you are breastfeeding, you should talk to your doctor about perhaps temporarily stopping breastfeeding if your nipples become cracked or they start to bleed. Up to about 80% of people who contract hepatitis C have no symptoms, but they can still transmit the virus to others. If they do become symptomatic, it usually appears between 2 to 12 weeks after exposure with a range of up to 6 months. Some of the common symptoms may include jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, clay-colored stools, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, weight loss, nausea, vomiting, fever, fatigue, headache, and joint pain. Healthcare providers may use multiple methods to test for and diagnose hepatitis C. A physical examination with medical, at-risk behavior, and symptom history will be done, as well as blood tests. A person may have abnormal liver function tests, and these levels may go up and down over time with chronic hepatitis C. An antibody screening may be performed, although a person may not react if they have been exposed to hepatitis C within the last six months or they may still have a positive antibody test even if they cleared the hepatitis C virus in the past. Confirmatory tests may be done as well. A viral load test, including the RNA, NAT, or PCR, will detect the amount of virus in the blood. If an antibody test is positive and the viral load is negative, it may be recommended to be retested later. Genotype testing may be done as well to test for the specific hepatitis C virus type. This is important in determining the proper treatment. Some tests to assess liver damage may include magnetic resonance elastography, or MRE, which combines MRI with sound waves. Also, transient elastography, which is an ultrasound transmitting vibrations, or liver biopsy, in which a thin needle is inserted through the abdominal wall to remove tissue for lab testing. About 15 to 25 percent of those infected with hepatitis C will clear the virus naturally. There are multiple oral and injectable antiviral medications available for treatment as well. The type of treatment depends on the viral genotype and any previous treatments received. Treatment may range from 8 to 24 weeks. There is over a 90 percent success rate for those who complete treatment. The goal of treatment is to have no detectable hepatitis C virus in the body at least 12 weeks after the completion of treatment. It is also important to treat any complications. Diuretics may be used to remove any excess fluid. Blood pressure medications may be given to relieve any pressure in the portal vein which leaves the liver. A tube compress and medications to stop and prevent bleeding in the esophagus. Medications to clear the body of toxins chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery to treat liver cancer, and a liver transplant for serious complications and damage. A liver transplant does not cure hepatitis C. Antiviral medication will be needed to prevent damage to the new liver. There are many risk factors for exposure to hepatitis C. They may include ever using IV drugs, sharing any drug equipment such as syringes, needles, cookers, 
cotton or tools for inhaling, which may have been contaminated with blood, having received blood, blood products, or organ transplants before 1992, or at any time from someone who tested positive for hepatitis C, receiving clotting factor concentrates before 1987, having received long-term kidney dialysis, being infected with HIV, being a healthcare worker with frequent blood contact or having had a needle stick injury, being born to a mother with hepatitis C. It is recommended to be tested after 18 months of age as the baby may still have maternal hepatitis C antibodies. Living with or caring for someone with hepatitis C, although the risk to casual and household contacts is considered to be very low. Having shared personal items with someone who is hepatitis C positive, which may include razors or toothbrushes, which may be contaminated with blood. Having unprotected sex with someone who is hepatitis C positive, especially if they have multiple sex partners or if they have been engaging in rough sex. Having received a tattoo in unsanitary conditions or with non-sterile equipment. Having ever been in prison due to the high infection rates and common risky behaviors in those who are incarcerated being a Vietnam War era military veteran, as they may have been exposed to infected blood through various routes, or being born between 1945 to 1965. This population is considered five times more likely to have hepatitis C than other adults, as they may have been exposed before current infection control procedures were available. A major complication from hepatitis C is cirrhosis or liver scarring which occurs in 10 to 20% of those chronically infected over a period of 20 to 30 years. Cirrhosis may cause swelling in the legs and abdomen, enlarged blood vessels in the stomach or esophagus, which may burst and cause internal bleeding, having an enlarged spleen, gallstones, increased drug sensitivity due to the decreased ability to filter them from the blood, insulin resistance, kidney or lung failure, decreased ability to fight infection, cognitive problems, or coma. Other complications may include liver failure, liver cancer, and death. You should see a doctor if you are at risk for, exposed to, or have symptoms of hepatitis C, if you have already been diagnosed for routine care or for worsening of symptoms, or just if you want tested. There is currently no vaccine for hepatitis C, but there are many ways to prevent the exposure. Do not use illicit drugs. However, if you do, don't share needles, syringes, or items inserted into the nose. Always use new, sterile equipment, and only handle your own equipment. Don't share razors, toothbrushes, or nail clippers, as they may be contaminated with blood. Have safer sex with a condom, especially with multiple partners with someone who is hepatitis C positive or if their health status is unknown. Sexual transmission between long-term monogamous couples is lower risk but still may happen. Together they should decide whether or not to use condoms. Also, license tattooed and piercing shops and using universal precautions when there is a potential for contact with blood and bodily fluids, such as using gloves, masks, and gowns as needed. If you have been diagnosed with hepatitis C, here are some important things to consider. Stop drinking alcohol to slow the progression of liver disease. Avoid any medications that affect the liver, and be sure to talk with your doctor about over-the-counter and prescription medications, as well as herbal and dietary supplements. Prevent the spread to others. Cover your wounds, throw out anything covered with blood yourself, and don't let anyone else touch it. Don't share razors or toothbrushes. Don't donate blood or semen. You may be able to donate some organs, eyes, or tissue, however. Inform healthcare workers, sexual partners, household contacts, and family members of your hepatitis C status. Be sure to use condoms and encourage any possible contacts to be tested. Follow up with routine physician care. You may be seen by a specialist, such as a gastroenterologist or hepatologist. Obtain any vaccines recommended by your doctor, especially the hepatitis A and hepatitis B vaccines, in order to prevent further liver infections. Follow your treatment regimen as prescribed. Continue to follow a healthy lifestyle if the hepatitis C is cleared naturally or treated medically to prevent reinfection. Follow a balanced diet. Get support to help with physical, emotional, and psychological effects. 
This may be from friends, family, support groups, or therapy. It is important to know that there are no job exclusions based on hepatitis C status. You are never immune to hepatitis C. You may become infected with a different genotype or, even if previously cleared, you may become reinfected with the same type. This concludes the hepatitis C presentation. If you have any questions, please visit any of these websites, contact your healthcare provider or your local health department. Thank you.